Hey guys, today I am going to talk about do I regret buying Magic Collections. I bought a lot of Magic Collections in 2020, including a sealed Magic Collection, about 30,000, uh, Black Lotus, uh, multiple Power 9, including Ruby, Ruby, Sapphire, and the the black one, um, forgetting, Jet, Mox Jet. And all of them have lost significant chunks of money. My dual lands that I bought this year have lost money. Uh, basically, any quote investment you would have made in Magic, if you only viewed it strictly from an investment standpoint, they lost a chunk of money. Now, people always say, oh, the buy list is not fair. That buy list is not fair. Um, the cards I bought at buy list, including my Black Lotus, now sell for half on eBay in similar condition. So uh, even my sealed boxes, even though their prices have not dropped as much, there is no volume. There's simply nobody who wants to buy 200 boxes of Dominaria, original Dominaria. It, it, there's not that marketplace because it's just gonna get reprinted and Dominaria, the best card will get reprinted and a remaster set. And then in that case, it's like, why don't you just buy the new Dominaria remastered? So we have a, um, you know, I also have a distributor. We have a lot of Crimson Vow, which isn't selling. We have a lot of Uninfinity, which doesn't sell. So I open them and I don't even get the space land. It has been a disaster of a 2022 for Magic the Gathering. Um, it ended on a very low note with Magic 30th. We all know, hey, this, I personally don't, two, less than 2000 of Magic 30th sold. According to the Lemmings, 3,000 of Rudy 6.9 sold, which means that Rudy sold more than 50% more of his own mystery kit than the Magic 30th edition. So I don't think, and the rest of it is going to be given away to stores, which I think is a good thing. In fact, 9,000 boxes at least will be given away to your local game store. Great, it's a fantastic Christmas gift. Why did, does the local game store care if it's 1,000 or 500 on the secondary market? It doesn't matter, it's free money. It's literally free money for your local game store. There's no excuses not to accept it. I, I don't see many local game stores protesting Magic 30th when it's being given to them for free. So I'll put that as a side note. Um, that was very negative. The overall atmosphere about Magic the Gathering is incredibly negative. I've never seen it this negative on YouTube, and I would know because I'm generally considered a negative YouTube channel about Magic. I most of the times don't have very much, don't have anything good to say about Magic the Gathering. And yeah, it, it's been brutal. Like, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I took a shipment of Magic Brothers War, and it doesn't sell. Uh, these sets, there, there's too many sets. A, there's too many sets. And as of this recording, Amazon just had another drop dead sale. They got boxes of new Compenna at 72, which is $2. I mean, it's $72 a box, my God. Like, you know, when you're paying 90 a box and you see it on Amazon. Now they limit you to free, okay? Uh, so there is some type of limit, but I mean, how many new Compenna boxes do you need right now? So. I, I, I mean, I might buy some, you know, I might buy some, but the money is very tight right now. I have never felt this pressure to really look at what I spend in my life. Um, for the most part, if I, there's something I want to buy. So number one, I think magic product in general was a very bad buy. And secondly, uh, it's a very difficult time to buy a product like magic, meaning you're going to have to count your pennies, count your dimes. A recession is here. Everyone and their grandmother on YouTube is saying it's going to be an apocalyptic event of some type. And I actually agree. You know, I hate Graham Stefan, but I got to agree with him. I think it's going to be bad. Um, I think well, a lot of people right now, people are like, oh, where's the layoff? The layoffs are here right before Christmas time. And the layoffs will come around probably mid or, or uh, late January. Uh, you don't lay people off during Christmas. That's just like rule number one, right? Uh, during the holidays, you let them have a good holiday. I mean, how sucky would that a boss be to lay off an employee right before their holidays? I couldn't imagine. 
and yeah, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be super tough, right? And what I mean super tough as a business owner who owns a business that's not related to magic, small businesses are effed in the butt and, and there's not much that can, I mean, outside of a five trillion dollar stimulus again, there's not much because this is what it was supposed to be during COVID-19. COVID-19 was the best times people had. They got five or 10 Lambos in a parking lot. They were buying giant homes, right? I mean, a lot of people for COVID-19 was the best times of their life because they could just ask gov the government to write them a $10 million check or 2 million, 2.25 million for a certain uh, sports card investor check and they could just live it up, right? And there are other, I know it's not the same business, blah, 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 but you, I sure would feel better if one of my businesses received a large amount of money, even if the other business did not. It helps me sleep better at night <laughs> and maybe I can travel more and go on vacation. So uh, overall, it's gonna be savage, man. My dude, 2023, like if everyone, if you watch any YouTuber, they're just telling you that it's it's gonna be just the ho most horrific economic year and all the evidence they present, all the things I don't disagree with. There's nothing I can disagree with. So the question is, should you really be buying magic cards in 2023? And the answer is no, I have every regret buying even a single pack and my distributor forced packs on me and again i could have said no i could have fought harder so it was my mistake i get it so i i, I get it this is a very big talk we're having right now on my other channel uh and in my um comments in the other channel is way kevin o'leary hates crypto <clears throat> he gets paid 15 million dollars to love crypto plus $3 million for his taxes on the 15, right? What a nice uh, guy, Sam Bakeman. For what, the most generous billionaire is what everyone on YouTube calls him after he pays them. Um, yeah, I mean, then suddenly he loves crypto and you take his advice. Yes, 90, I would say 95% of the fault that you put money on FTX and went to zero is you. Okay, it's up to you to decide, do I trust Kevin O'Leary? You know, do I trust this exchange? I'm gonna do my own research. It's up to you to decide to do that. But there is some blame, and this is what's happening right now with Graham, Stefan, Spencer, Cornelia, Meet Kevin, Andre, Junk, uh, Minority Mindset. You could go over all the financial YouTubers who got caught promoting FTX, and it was like 90% of them, is even though you bear, you know, the, the person making the decision to put the money into FTX crypto exchange, that you, you, it was a decision you made. What percent blame, if any, do you blame the person who's been promoting it to you in every single video that you watch of theirs? That's the question. And the courts will decide because these people are being sued right now. So, I would say take a safe path. I don't personally sell you anything. I don't have an affiliate link even to my own website. I don't even have a link to my own website to sell you anything. Just be very careful and very cautious what people try to sell you for next year, including Wizards of the Coast. Bye guys.